So I just got done getting my hair cut. And I've never actually thought about this. I've never actually thought of... Tried to think how a Protestant would think, right? And it just has come up uh, recently. And when I mean recently, I mean the last... Really last 24 hours. Um... The Bible is speaking, the the New Testament, the Old Testament is speaking to the children of Israel, right? The assembly. And the New Testament is speaking to the ecclesia, the assembly, right? Ecclesia translated church in English, English in Spanish, and whatever else in whatever other language. The assembly. um, The church, people inside, right? Like the... A non-Jew could read the Torah or a non-Christian. Like if a Hindu read, read the Torah, it knew it would know it's not speaking to them, right? And if a non, but yet if a non-Christian reads the New Testament, yeah, Christ is is speaking about the world, and Paul is going out and evangelizing to the the pagans and stuff, but. All of his writings are to already established churches with, I mean, with multiple people, obviously, right? So it's from the church to the church. It's from church authorities to the laity, right? Or is sometimes from one church official to another. How do the Protestants get their concept of salvation? Like, well, you know, they always assert that they're saved. And how do they know that without, like, baptism, the Eucharist? Because they don't believe in either of those. Um, I know it's it's based on emotion, right? It's just a feeling that you get. Which, again, makes me sad because what happens when you get depressed? Like, or do they think that they know they're saved by the fact that they do? Maybe this is why it seems very legalistic to me. Do they think that if they ever sin again or if they sin as much as they did before, that they're not saved? Or like if they don't sin as much after they have this experience or say these magical words or or whatever or quote unquote put faith in Christ Um, but you put faith in Christ but you don't you don't attend the liturgy you don't get baptized take the Eucharist uh, or if you get baptized it means it's an outward sign of an inward change it's the something you do it's unnecessary Um, I just it this is why I really feel bad for these people because what is, I mean, they're, it's like, that's like giving someone like rice cakes basically when they need food and nutrition and vitamins and meat. And, you know, it's not even giving them milk at first, it's just giving them, or it's, it might be just giving them milk but then never giving them anything more or lessening it because I'd have to imagine the first impact of the first conversion experience you would just be holding on to that to the rest of your life right um, it just it kind of bums me out thinking about it and uh, I know some Protestants say the Nicene Creed uh and some of them had started to look at the church fathers, which is good. But again, um, the church was, there wasn't, you know, a bunch of different churches. Then when the church argued, when different church fathers argued, they were all part of only one church. There was only one church for a thousand years. I mean, you had, you know, the Marcionites and the Arians. But initially, the Arians and the Marcionites were within the one church, the only church before they were kicked out, right? And they believed wacky stuff. But as Christianity goes, only one church, right? 
So until basically 1054 with the papal and eastern split, because I don't even think that the Assyrian Church of the East that that was even known about that they, you know, uh, what's his name, Nestorius became the bishop in Assyria because Rome didn't like him or in the Persian Empire, but the Christians weren't hostile to each other. They would consider each other Christian, you know, you know, especially right after Islam came along. Oh, Christian, good. And even after the schism they would still recognize I mean the crusade was a call to Christian brothers of the west to come and help even though there was schism but nowadays you know Baptists hate Lutherans and Catholics and and everybody and the non-denominationalists think that everybody's right while everybody's wrong and you hear, like, the breakoffs of the Catholic Church saying the worst stuff about Catholics. Like, they they say, like, works can't save you, or this or that, right? Which is, I don't know, it seems hypocritical, because they seem like the most works-based, legalistic people. But then, they say, they say you're fa- saved by faith, right? But the Roman Catholics have faith in Christ. So why doesn't their faith in Christ save them? I, I don't understand that. If there's any Protestant that can answer any of this stuff for me, please do. Peace to you.